Greetings to you. Welcome to the Marriage Foundation. I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. This topic is why does my wife always belittle me? So I have to say that with questions like this, I'm very tempted to pretend I'm a Western psychologist. However, I'm not. You don't want one. You don't really want to know why she always belittles you. I'm not arguing with you about whether she does or not, but it's a matter of perspective. But what I am going to do is I'm going to offer you some help on what you can do as it's occurring, okay? But I want you to do me a favor first. I want you to like this video and I want you to subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into this. You have to understand that how we feel about things that happen on the outside are habitual. They are reactions to what's external. And you may say, oh no, you don't understand. She seriously belittles me and I'm gonna give you this example and that example. It doesn't make any difference. It's always your inner mind's reaction to the external, always, 100% of the time. Because the mind has levels of calculators. It has the most conscious calculator that's right there, and occasionally we use that, we go, okay, this is happening and that's happening, what should I do? I'll do this because it'll produce that result like that. But 95% of the calculation that's going on in our mind is on the subconscious plane where we have had a similar experience to something that's showing up now and then we automatically, out of habit, react. We react in how we feel, which again is the mind. You, the soul, don't feel emotionally. You can only feel love and joy and like that. And so what happens is what you have the power to do is you have the power to go, Okay, she may really mean it. She may be really in a mood where she wants to be mean and be an a-hole, but I'm not going to pay attention. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of let all these words flow by me like clouds in the wind. And I'm gonna look in her eyes or look at her beautiful hair or her stunning body, and I'm going to go there. And I'm going to bring her into my space of admiration and love for her. You see, there was a time before you got married when you were knocked out by your wife's beauty. You couldn't get enough of her. And then what happened was your mind we have this mind, be we're soulmates, right? But between you, the soul, and her, the soul, you have her mind and your mind. And the, the minds in this context are just loaded with filters that are afraid of that connection. We're not taught this. And so our mind gets in and it stops love, literally stops love because the mind cannot handle love. It can't wrap its arms around love because the mind is material, where you are a soul. You're ethereal. You're spiritual. You're not the mind. But we don't know this. We don't learn this. So you get sucked in. So what you got to do is get out of your own cycle, not the cycle that's going on between the two of you, but your own cycle of reactive experience, reactive experience, and get out of that, step out of it, and commune with her on the higher level of love. I don't know how to make it more simple. Let me give you an example, though. So she turns to you and says, can't you even do this right? And your mind is going, oh, what did I do this time? Why am I being picked on? That's the mind. You, the soul, are above that. So instead of getting into this inner communication that is very subtle, it's mostly subconscious, 
you recognize that this is something that's happening that your mind is going to react to unpleasantly. It's going to take her words personally. It's not going to consider that maybe she's having a bad day or whatever. None of that is coming into the picture. And so what you do is you step out of it and you laugh. You laugh that once again, your mind is sucking you in. And then you look at her and you say, I love you. You're amazing. You just change the subject into one that's much more fun, one that is much more uplifting and go back to when you were first together so you experienced the love that you had and still have, but it got buried under all this crap. Get it? I hope so, and I think so. If not, put it in the comments and pay attention to these videos because at the Marriage Foundation, it's all about a positive approach to marriage because I believe in marital bliss because you're a soul. You married your soulmate, huh? You're supposed to have marital bliss, joy without end, joy without end, love ever expanding. Get it? Okay, I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. Visit again, go to the website, by the way, because you could download the 10 top do's and don'ts, but believe me, there's nothing else out there because I didn't, come from a background of Western psychology. I was a divorce mediator, kind of a business mentality. So for me, figuring out all these questions to marriage, which I realize are irrelevant questions if you really come down to it, what I did was I went, okay, why do we get married in the first place? We get married to be happy, to experience love, and experience incredible harmony, and it's so achievable, so attainable. God bless you. See you again. Take care. Thanks.